Hi everyone, it's Roman Khan from RMK Six Sigma again. I just want to do a short video with you to go through 10 tips to increase your Minitab efficiency. So I was lucky enough to be asked by Minitab Inc. to do a blog and I decided to do the, the 10 tips blog and I wanted to share that with you on a video format now. Okay, let's start. So these are the 10 tips that we're going to be going through. Uh, fairly straightforward and I'll highlight them as I go through them on Minitab. So I'm going over to Minitab now and as always I like example based learning so here let's say we have a factory and in the factory we have shifts at work morning, afternoons and nights and I'm going to want 30 rows of data and let's say the factory makes two products so we have yield one and yield two. So the data doesn't matter so much, it's more how we go through the journey and learn the 10 tips. So if I want 30 rows of data, I need to type out morning, afternoon, night 10 times, and that can be quite laborious, and obviously we don't want laborious. So the first thing I can do, I can highlight my three cells, morning, afternoon, night, then I can grab the fill handle, which is the bottom right corner, and drag that down, if that works. There it goes. And as you see, as I drag down, I'm shown what the next cell is going to be, morning, afternoon, night. I'm just going to go down to cell 9 and then release. And I could easily have done that for all 30 cells. So that's tip 1. Tip 2 is called something using called make patterned data. So if I wanted to, I could go to calc, make pattern data, text values. Okay, so here I filled it out already. Store the pattern data in my uh, column called shift, and my pattern data is going to be called morning, afternoon, and night. And as I'm going through each cell, I only want to repeat each cell once, but I want to repeat the sequence of morning, afternoon, and night 10 times. 10 times 3 is 30 to give me my 30 cells. So I'm going to click OK to execute that, and we'll see what happens. So, tip 2. Can easily make pattern data and that's worth doing when there's a really long list that you don't even want to use the fill handle for. Okay so now moving on to the next tip which is using set base when generating random data. Okay so Minitab uses an equation to give us random data so it's not truly random but what it does do is mix up where our data is going to start from and that's called the base. So we can set our base to be the same Minitab will then use the same equation to give us random data and then we should all have the same random data. Bit of a cheat but it's worth knowing what to do especially if you're running a class and you want everyone to have the same data. Okay to set the base we go calc set base and I've chosen three just because I was born on the third and I'm just going to click on OK. Nothing actually happens but the first time we use any random data generator, it will start off with the set base of three. So let's now generate some random data to put in the column called yield one. Okay, so I'm going to use a uniform distribution. So calc, random data, and there she is, uniform. Click on that. It's going to clear the menu by pressing a three. So number of rows to generate is 30. I want it to go into column yield 1 and I'm going to have my data between 60 and 100 so nothing lower than 60 nothing greater than 100 click OK to generate the data now we should all have the same random data okay the next tip is a must know for Minitab and no doubt you'll know it but <clears throat> if I didn't go over it well it'd be, it'd be a bit remiss of me so if I want to bring up the same menu, I can click on the Edit Last dialog box icon or press Control E. To be honest, I use either Control E or I click on the icon and it brings up the last uh, dialog box that I used and all the submenus, if it had any submenus, it also still keep the same numbers stored within them. Now I can as I did before press F3 to clear the menu and this would clear the submenus as well so very useful if you want to clear everything from a function that you've used. I'm going to press F3, everything clears, now I'm going to make some random data for yield 2, 30, 
yield to, and then the same numbers again, 60 and 100. Okay, click on OK. Fantastic. Okay, so we've got our three columns of data now. So the next tip involves us having a graph with a categorical variable. So I'm very quickly going to make myself a bar graph. So I click on graph, sorry, bar chart. And I'm going to use a function of a variable, one y simple, click on OK. And I've, you can see I've done this already before, so I'm just going to click on there. And I'm going to choose standard deviation. My graph variable is going to be yield 1 to start off with. And it's going to be divided up using the categorical variable of shift. Click on shift and then click OK to make the graph. OK, so here's our bar chart showing the standard deviation of yield 1 between the shifts. So it goes afternoon, morning, night. Oh, but hang on, my data is for morning, afternoon, night, not afternoon, morning, night. So Minitab has by default broken up the categorical <coughs> x uh, axis uh, alphabetically. And we don't want alphabetically, we want it to be in terms of time, morning, afternoon, night. So the next tip is there is a way of setting the order of a categorical variable in a graph. So what we do, we go back to the project window, right click, or sorry, left click anywhere in the column shift one because that's where the categorical variable is, and then right click, and then we go to column properties, and then click on value order. Okay. Now this is where we see that it's the default is alphabetical order and what we want is order of occurrence in worksheet. So just click on the radio button for that. We could also have user specified which is useful if you have maybe you know, the, the months the way they've done them here and they've just abbreviated them to three letters. And you can choose your own as well. Okay, click on OK. Now we need to go back to the graph. So the next tip is on how to update a graph as well. So here we see the symbol has changed in the top left corner. We've got that little warning triangle and then we've got two half arrows. That means our graph data is no longer in sync with the project window. Okay, so now we can update that and update our access, uh, x-axis at the same time. So if I right click on the graph, I've got the choice of update graph automatically or update graph now. I like to use the one shot now if you go to automatically every time the data in the project window will change the, the graph will change automatically and you don't have to do anything but I'm just going to go for the one shot uh, update graph now okay so you can see now here the the symbol has changed we no longer have the warning triangle meaning that we're in sync with the data in the project window and we've changed our order uh, of our categorical variable on the x-axis to what we wanted as well. Okay, so the next tip involves me having graphs of different formats. So I'm just going to pause the video and do that now. Okay, let's start again. So this is the chart I made previously. All I've done is change the formatting. So it's still the bar chart of the standard deviation of yield 1 uh, formatted with our categorical variable in um, normal order morning, afternoon and night. Now let's say I wanted to make the chart for yield 2 and I've changed all the formatting in the graph and yet I want to maintain the same formatting. Will I have to do all the formatting again? Well, no. Tip 8 is to show you a way of using similar formatting and to make the same graph straight away. So what you have to do is activate the graph by clicking on it then click on editor and make similar graph. So you can see here's the um, variables I can use. So there's not much, many options for changing things around, but I can easily change yield two, yield one, sorry, to yield two. Now if I click OK, I get the same graph being produced for yield two this time using the same formatting, and I don't have to spend loads of my time repeating everything. Okay, so that's tip eight, and now tip nine is using the layout tool which is also used for graphs, so a very useful tool. So if I click on my graphs project window, I've already got four graphs that I made earlier. Actually, I only made two, but you didn't see me make another two. And let's say I want to put them all on the same plot. 
So if I activate the first graph, click on it, and then click on Editor, Layout Tool, I get this really nifty tool coming up which allows me to make a, a matrix of graphs. So in the top left is the controls for how many actual plots I'm going to have there. As you can see, I can increase the number of rows and increase the number of columns. I can, so it's taking me there three by three. I, can, I think I can go up to nine by nine. But then it gets very difficult to see the graphs on the sheet. So we're just going to stick to two by two. You can see where the blue square is on the plot. This is where I'm going to take items across. So this is the next plot I'm going to put into the top right. But block plot of yield one and two. Click on that. See the blue square move. If I want to get rid of one of these, I can just click on it and move back the other way. But let's put that back in now and complete four plots. Now click on finish and I get like a four in one plot uh, all on the same graph plot. I can still edit the individual plots, change the formatting. Let's just show you that. I can make the numbers bigger because it's going to be hard to see now that they're smaller. So change the font size to 14 there. Click OK. OK, so it's still got editing capabilities, but now I've got a four in one plot which I can then export into other reports. Okay, the final tip I'm going to give you is about conditional formatting. This was introduced in Mini Tab 17. So if I go back to the project window here, I've got yield one and yield two columns of data. And let's say I want to highlight where I've got high values of yield one, anything over 95%. I can use conditional formatting to do that. So I click on data, conditional formatting, and you can see there's four options for conditional formatting. And this is something you should really have a go with yourself and a practice because there are a lot of different options available. So we're just going to use a simple one, highlight cell, and greater than, because I want to see anything that's greater than 95%. So that's on column yield one. And I can say, show me cells that are greater than 95, and my styling is red at the moment. So if I click on OK, I can then pick out anything that's over 95. So it's very useful for picking up errors in your data and for looking at high values, low values, etc. OK, so that concludes our mini tab top 10 tips. If you liked what you saw, please give us a thumbs up. Thank you very much. See you next time.